Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to build and tune a very underused car in C-Class. This is the Hot Wheels Volkswagen Beetle 50th Anniversary Edition. So we're all familiar with the VW Beetle. It's always been a strong car, um, a bit OP in previous games, especially in B-Class and A-Class. You can even see power builds in it for S-Class. But what about the Hot Wheels Beetle? I was looking through the leaderboards in C-Class and to my surprise, I did not find it anywhere. And following my past tuning guide with the Ferrari F50, one of my lovely viewers um, put me out a challenge asking, are there any C-Class tuning guides that I could make? And uh, considering that it's not a class that I venture into much at all, I thought it would make a really fun challenge to see where we can put an underused car on a board. So with that said, how about I show you what I managed to do with it and then we'll dive straight into how to tune this car. So here we are at Le Mans Bugatti circuit. So as I mentioned in C-Class C500 PI, we have managed to get a top 20 time in this Beetle. Um, very interesting track actually. It, uh, the top 12 is completely dominated by the Jeep CJS, I believe. Yeah, the Jeep CJS. Um, it's, that car is just completely OP for this track. It's just got so much acceleration. Um, but after about 15th position, as you can see there, 16th downwards, it starts to get a lot more varied. We're seeing some Honda Civics. We're seeing the Mazda MX-5. That's another super strong car, but more so around more like momentum tracks uh, or kind of all-rounders actually, like Silverstone, the MX-5 is the best car. Um, but right below us is an Acura Integra, and then we also have an Alfa Montreal. So there's quite a few cars that can actually hover at doing really good pace around this track. And I'm really happy that we've now been able to see that the Volkswagen Beetle can do it as well. I'm not too sure if the original Beetle may be better. I think it might do, um, but I think it was just really fun to actually show some love to the Hot Wheels cars because I never touched them before apart from uh, within the last week basically because I always knew of the Bone Shaker and I hated that car in Forza 6 and because of that I never bothered trying anything else. Um, but enough of that, we've managed to prove what the car is worth and um, it's really great for, car, for tracks that have a blend of acceleration and grip. Um, let's now take a look over at how we go to build this car, um, it's, it's quite a tricky one. Um, but basically, um, you want to make sure that you're not putting the most amount of grip possible in it. Um, so I initially did go with a build that actually had um, a lot more grip. So say like with race tires, we can put it all the way up to six, but that would obviously put us in B class. 5.7 handling is the most we can actually get for C class. You just have to build the car differently. However, um, 5.7, I was able to get into the 153s at the Mons Bugatti, but um, it was barely just scraping into the 53s. I really wanted to try and get a mid 53, try and get in that top 20 territory. Um, it also put me like top 10 in uh, Europe as well. So um, we've gone for just a stock tire compound. Um, there is no rear tire width. Um, and the rim style is completely stock as well. Um, you actually find that a lot of the things in this car are stock, but for the aero, we do actually have the Forza Race front bumper and we do have the Forza Race rear wing. No conversion, so no need to look over there. Onto the drivetrain, stock clutch, transmission we've put on sport just so we could actually adjust the gears. They were very short, and I found with this car, um, because the power band, it basically peaks quite early, but then the horsepower just stays there. Like for, so it, I think it peaks at around 6,000 revs, but it just keeps on going. So I realized that we go with a three gear setup around this track. Um, onto the driveline, we've kept it stock. Race differential, you know the drill, race differential. Can't miss about and miss that. So platform and handling, we have gone with race brakes does save us quite a few pounds on this car which is important stock springs and dampers the only other option is drift and um, good news is as long as you have this it's stock anyway you can completely adjust the camber the spring rate the toe the caster all that jazz um, and as for the weight reduction we have gone with race weight as you can see that's a massive difference there well over 100 pounds 
and then 0.2 acceleration difference in terms of the stats so make sure that you do that because uh, we, we've made this car it's obviously grippy in c-class 5.5 is actually a lot of grip but you can have more it's just this car seems to be best around the 5.5 range um, i think it I think of it more so as an all-rounder car that's just really that hooks up really nicely around medium speed bends low speed bends it can get a bit twitchy but um, yeah it's a great car nonetheless as for the engine parts there are not many that we put in the only one we have gone with is the sport exhaust and um, to be honest it was just the only one that would actually fit to the 500 pi really nicely um, and good news is it saves us a bit of weight as well whilst adding power so a well worthy investment and um, but yeah that is the build itself now let's take a look at the tune so tire pressure is 29.29 the gearing we have just moved the final drive to 3.39 so initially it was all the way at like 390 3.99 and um, so you had to use all five gears and i just found with this car it seems you lose so much with every additional gear change um, and with with that power band like I mentioned that the power just stays very high for a long time so um, that's why we're just utilizing first gear second gear and third gear fourth gear and fifth gear they are not needed around these tracks but you can use them on the longer circuits alignment front camber is minus 1.2 the rear is minus 1.5 toe front zero zero rear toe minus 0.2 front caster 6.0 so why have we gone with basically having the rear camber even less than the front this after all this is a rear wheel drive car and the engine is at the front so why have we done this it's just a really quirky car to be honest i found that um, it was not steering that well um, it would be very unpredictable on the handling so Basically, I found that um, there'd be incredible understeer going into the turns, um, and at the same time, it would just snap out a lot um, midway around a corner once you start applying the acceleration. So it can it can really feel like a twitchy car when you're pushing it to the limit. But if you're not trying to go 100%, it's actually very comfortable. Um, I just found that for some reason, the the rear camber like this worked so well. It helped rotate the car initially, um, and then we have that rear toe just to help stabilize it coming out of the turns and um, so this is helping with the corner entry this is helping with the corner exit then as for the car stop we just had to bump it up basically try and bring more of the camber to the rear like we've already done um, because otherwise especially when transitioning imagine the s bends um, coming into the final sector of the track at Bugatti and the car it was just way too easy to snap over steer and you don't want that in a race so anti-roll bars um, as you can see we, we've kind of like tried to enforce a bit of understeer but not a lot so on the front we have 21.14 on the rear it's 17.69 the springs, um, I think I've pretty much left this near stock. It may be the exact numbers for stock. It just seemed to work really well. When I was checking the telemetry, I found that it was having a decent amount of contact on all of the tires around the turns, as well as the spring telemetry was telling me that the car's not bottoming out in, at weird points. So it just handled pretty well. Front is 324.4. The rear is 351.5. The ride height, we just slammed it all the way down to the bottom. I think it does it by stock anyway. Um, 6.3 and then 7.7. .7. Just be weary though that that is quite a significant difference. You'd think, oh, it's only an inch. But um, as I mentioned with this car, it can feel quite twitchy when you're transitioning uh, between the deceleration and then acceleration. So if you find that just too difficult to manage, um, I'd probably say feel free to stiffen the front spring and also consider increasing the ride height maybe to level it out with the rear um, the only thing you'll miss out on is that initial turn in response it will kind of slow it down a little bit but it would certainly make the car feel more stable for you so bear that in mind onto the damping rebound stiffness is 8 on the front 8.5 on the rear bump stiffness is 3.5 on the front and 4.0 on the rear so basically the bump here is set for the tiniest bit of oversteer as we are initially turning 
However, the rebound kind of works the opposite way, so we're trying to actually numb some of that oversteer. We want the car to feel a little bit more neutral, um, but I'll show you in a replay anyway how much you need to be careful with your steering when coming out of turns. Onto the downforce, it's just maximum, so 100 on the front, 200 on the rear. And braking force, 49%. Feel free to put this up to 50 or maybe 51, um, just if you want the car to feel a bit more stable whilst you are braking into turns, especially the kind of turns where you're having to trail brake, you're effectively lunging into the apex. That's when having 49% um, or even less can feel quite troublesome. But for me, this is how I could get the fastest lap. Um, as for the braking pressure, I've put it at 150. Feel free to set it at whatever you like. Uh, lastly, the differential. So 80% for acceleration, 30% for deceleration. So for the diesel, um, I had to put it up to 30 because as I mentioned, when braking and then trying to adjust to acceleration, basically letting off the throttle and then applying it back on, um, the car's rear end would just snap out of nowhere. So that's why I put it at this high, uh, which is very rare. Like I, I really wouldn't do this unless it was a mid or rear engine car. As for the XL though, um, I tried 100. Um, it was just a bit too much locking of the wheels and then it would kind of just, it made the problem even worse. You get the snap over steer and then the rear tires are already like locked together so i had to put that down to there um but with that being said um i hope this tune helps you guys i'm now going to take you over to see the lap that i set so i think i've done it i can't actually quite remember it was either earlier today or tomorrow i'm not too sure this like summer heat wave um, is driving me crazy but um, let's get you over to that lap i do i honestly believe that this car can go one or two tenths faster uh, because there are so many laps that I just completely binned in really frustrating ways, uh, mainly in the last sector actually. Um, so yeah, we have that 153.4, um, but there is a point two in this, I know that. Um, in terms of the leaderboard, it wouldn't put us much higher really, um, but you know, it, I just wanted to make sure we could get top 20. If we get the point two, then it's putting us at 18th or 17th. So I think that's really kind of like pushing it at its limit. But feel free to try to tune guys. I always like to hear what you guys think of it and um, how you prefer to drive it, whether it's with sim steering or normal steering. Um, I actually ended up going with normal steering just because I was able to hit the laps more consistently. Um, but it can, it can go, it can still do a point two with sim steering, it's just, you have to be willing to put in a fair amount of laps and I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to bank the top 20 and then it's good enough for the video. So let's now take it over to the replay. I'll put the telemetry on for you guys as well. Um, just so you can, if you feel like it, you can examine um, all of the inputs, but I'll slow down at certain parts for you. I'll actually rewind and just explain why I drove the car the way I did around certain corners. Cause that I know it's gonna seem a little bit unorthodox. So let's get that telemetry on for you guys. Okay, so coming into turn one, you notice that I'm actually in the middle of the track. I'm not all the way over to the left. Typically do this. Now, why haven't I gone for being on the left more? Why am I in the middle? Well, basically we're in C-Class, so the cars are a lot slower. And particularly with the Beetle, we just found that basically it has enough grip um, to hold a tighter line and it doesn't scrub off the speed anyway so that is why we're doing this it actually saves a, a good few feet and um, coming into turn two here so bear that in mind and might be a nice little trick for you guys as you can see we're just trying to hook it up with each apex and you see the car wobbling a fair bit it does react a lot to the bumps at this track so it can feel a bit sketchy at times but see we lunge into this long right hander and then just try and loop back, we get close to the curb, but we do not want to touch that inside curb. It completely unsettles the front end of the car. This one is very interesting, so I just want to pause it here, because if you actually take a moment to look, you notice the track actually leans inwards into the curb. The camber is towards the curb, so that means when you get to this point, this is when you want to brake. But after that, you want to immediately try and trail brake and move onto the inside as soon as possible because that tracks the way the track leans it will just help bring you around a little bit faster then as for the exit you can try and go really far wide but um, I, I just maintain personally that it's best to go for um, 
bit of a shallow exit instead. Here is quite interesting. You don't want to touch that rear inside curb. You notice a bit of slide on the car. That did actually cost me a good half a tenth um, on the exit. It's a very tricky hairpin to get right. I've seen a lot of people mess up um, in races. Here you just want to brake right before that overhead bridge and then we just try and coast a lot and then when it's safe enough we apply the throttle. Keep it in third gear there. If you go into second you'll get some snap over steer. And then coming into the final sector now, we're just trying to keep it tight. Don't don't be scared of touching these curves. These ones are very flat so it's okay. You just want to be very careful on the throttle as you notice. I, I'm taking my time before putting the hammer down as it were and then this final turn we get a massive slide on the towel then. That, that cost me another half a tenth right now compared to the Ghost, but I've got a really good run out of the final turn. So that is that. As I mentioned, I'm hoping this uh, is a bit motivating for you guys to try this car. And if you don't want to spend ages just hot lapping it, just take it in the C-Class hoppers. I found it really fun going against other cars and um, it just seemed really fun uh, that it's got a really good balance of grip and acceleration and um, a car that kind of prefers a bit of momentum um, but either way it, it's just a really fun little car to drive and I highly recommend it because it, it's been completely overlooked in this game and um, at least for C-Class so give it a whirl I'm definitely going to build it for B-Class and A-Class as well and um, Basically, that is it for the tuning guide. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it a lot. Um, if you have, please like and please subscribe. Um, there's been a lot of new people coming in this week, so a big shout to JSR Devon, my teammate, for pointing some of you my way. Uh, if you're already subscribed, then please share the video or comment below what tuning guide you want to see next. Let me know what type of cars you love driving, maybe ones that are not too overpowered, not too popular, things that just make really good sleeper cars in the lobbies um, and also when you want to hit the leaderboards. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again in the next video.